Hello everybody, this is Training Gamer back to kick off round two for Group D, the group with all the debutants in it, well except for Xeno. But anyway, in this session we are going to see Silver Knights going up against Man, Broxy going up against Lad, and then Xeno Slick Goku going up against Team North America. So yes, some interesting matches here, some clashes at the bottom, some clashes at the top. So without further ado, let's get on with our first matchup, shall we? Okay, in the red corner, four Silver Knights, as you can see here, with his hyperactive behavior, we got Spiny! Okay, so I, I'm sure I, I've already put up what terrain this is and which dinos have the advantage and disadvantage, so you all know. And I should point out that this terrain doesn't really have, isn't going to affect this much, because neither of our guys have a lightning dinosaur or a wind dinosaur. Okay, backing up the spiny, we got you up. Let's cephalus, you up the cephalus, a pretty decent dinosaur. Quite a few people are using it. Um I don't know about it being in second. Maybe would have preferred to have it in first and then spiny in second, but it's this guy's team, it's his goal. <laughs> his fault as he loses. Right, as for man in the blue corner, we got a T-Rex. Made lad look like a lad in the first round. Will man make it two wins out of two? Um, it'll be tough because this T-Rex does have the type disadvantage against Spiny, so that could be costly. So I suspect that this Brontekins is going to have to do its work. Well, we saw what a Brontekins can do in Group B, didn't we? With Black Beauty? I think, yeah. This man may need to rely on that kind of power from Brontekins. Okay, so man wants to swap when HP's below half. Broxy, no, not Broxy. Silver Knights went in the red. Ooh, gets the first hit though. I mean, it's not going to do too much damage, but a hit to hit. Ooh, what we got here? We got a support effect from Big Bad Ronty. Shockwave coming in here, and this is a good start from man. Right, so that means the T-Rex will be going for Skizzers. You can't, I'm sorry, buddy, but you can't go rock. You can't go rock. Yeah, you're gonna have to go paper. <laughs> well, it's not the worst case scenario. I mean, to a degree, it's kind of the best case scenario in a bad situation because it's a firebomb, so it won't do too much damage. Let's have a look. Yeah. But it is a strong start from man, and Silver Knight's yet to get going. This kind of happened to them in the last matchup against Team North America. They just really struggled, but they finally get a hit on the board, and it's going to be a free. Not much damage, but at least they got a hit on the board. The Magma Blaster getting triggered, and it's his Futaba Cannon. Ooh, but a Water Sword's coming, coming Ter Tyrannosaurus' way. Oh wow, okay, so that T-Rex will be ready to swap. But will he get the swap? I mean, he could do with the swap. Oh, he's not gonna get it. No swapping for the T-Rex, and in fact, it's gonna die. So after a slow start, Silver Knight's turning this match around to take the lead. Boosh. Yeah, kind of the outcome I was expecting here. The T-Rex getting killed by Spiny. Kind of the outcome we expected, but it's all up to Brontekins now, and it's time for Brontekins to show us why he is such a good dinosaur. Oh, there's the first hit, and remember, all the more while, that bar is going to fill up. Okay, so it'll be Spiny's turn to try a swap, but will he get it? The, ooh, not yet, not yet, but he'll get another go. Ooh, another tie. The ties, even though man is losing, ties probably favour the Brontekins because it fills up the bar quicker. And in fact, I think we are going to see Spectral Armour. And the Spiny's going to fail the swap. So Europlocephalus will get hit as well. So after all that, the only thing that really accomplished is filling up the bar for Brontekins. Ooh, not good for Silver Knights. And in fact, yeah. 
Should Bontlikins get another hit, he will get the spec. We will. We might see spectral armor. It's highly likely. Of course, that only applies if Bontlikins gets a hit. Well, he doesn't need the hit because it gets the, he gets the tie. So you know what that means? It's spectral armor time. Now, the saving grace here for you Opercephalus is that it's at full HP. So a lot, as long as it's not a crit, I think it might just survive. Oh, maybe not. Well, here we go. It's all on this. Oh, Spectral Destroyer! We're gonna find out. It might survive. It might. I mean, I'm not betting my house on it, but it might survive. We're about to find out. I don't think it's gonna survive, but it could. No. <laughs> and there's the win for man. And as I suspected, Brought the kins being the big reason why they won. As for Silver Knights, well, just unlucky. They just got it by the Spectral Destroyer, and that basically annihilated them. <laughs> but yes, it's another win for the man. An impressive tournament debut so far. Right, let's go with our next matchup, shall we? Okay then, in the red corner for Broxy, we got the Amargosaurus. Quite a few Amargosauruses in this tournament. Can't really seem to think why. Okay, where are we? We are on the meadow field. So it doesn't really matter to Brock's seat. Actually, it doesn't matter to either of our combatants because neither of them have a grass or a fire dinosaur. Okay, backing up the Amargosaurus, we got Stegosaur. I think there's like two other guys that have this exact same team. I think it's Cheer Knight and Iron Down. No, not Iron Down. But yeah, I know Cheer Knight has the exact same team. Not very original. Right. As for Lad in the blue corner. Some originality shown here with the Indosuchus. Lad didn't... Well, had a tough opening match. Especially against our T-Rex. Where he had the type disadvantage. And I think he had terrain advantage as well, the T-Rex. So yeah. Very tough opening for Lad. But I'm sure they'll bounce back and do fine in this tournament. Backing up the Indosuchus. We've got the Megdosaurus. Uh, and the Megasaur, we saw a glimpse of what it can do. It definitely pulled this weight. It had too much weight to pull, but it definitely pulled this weight. So, yeah, not sure where, where this one's going to go. Both of these two suffered defeats in the first round, so, yeah. Although, the Broxy did get a losing bonus point, and Lad is still pointless. Right, that's a tie. Not a good start for Lad, but a very good start for Broxy. And yes, I need to double check when they want to swap. Well, Lad is going to want to swap right now because they want to swap when HP's in the yellow. And Broxy when HP's in the red. Oop, that's a tie. Well, this is a very strong start from Broxy. Lad's really, really struggling so far. I mean, he got absolutely smoked by that crit, but the Indo Super is going to get away with a swap. Eat up that Earth Barrier as well. I mean, get. I mean, this makes no difference because I think the Cyclone is going to wear off when the Indo Super comes back in. Right, it's all on the Megasaurus again. Indo Super's yet again proving that it didn't really happen for it. Oh, sorry, it's a tie. <laughs> I, I double clicked there, sorry. The Margosaurus are meant to swap, yeah. Okay, now it can s No, not yet. It's when his HP's in the red, strange. Die! Hit it! <laughs> Car Stranger, get your head in the game. Head in the game. Oh, no! He's getting it by a Futaba cannon! Oh, this wow, this Margosaurus just loves getting off crits, don't it? Well, the Megasaurus is nice knowing you. But you're probably dead. Oh no, but almost. Okay, Aqua Vortex could help. But yeah, it's not looking good for Lad. Okay, he gets the swap. He gets the Aqua Vortex and the swap, so you no. Know, not all doom and gloom for Lad. Let's see if he can kill us Amargosaurus at least. Oh, 
Alright, so it's time to swap for the Amargosaurus. And let's see if Broxy gets that swap. The answer to that is, of course, yes. Oh, oh, it's a power drain. Never see it on a, never really see it on a, like a, 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 a long neck water dinosaur. And yet, there it goes. There it goes into suit, yes. <laughs> the Stegosaurus comes in, and a bonus point win is probably going to happen for Broxy. Which will, in fact, oh, it won't put him top, but it'll put him near the top. And yet, there it is. Game over for lad. <laughs> Wow, that was really, that was brutal. Like, the two the two crits from the Amargosaurus made the difference. That was the difference in the end. The Amargosaurus getting the crits. And, yeah, a very tough start for lads so far in this tournament. But Broxy bouncing back from round one with a bonus point win. Okie dokie, on to our final match of this session now. Right, a clash at the top to finish this round off. Oh, we're in the Alpha Arena. Uh, I don't think that actually suits anyone, but, you know, nice to see. Right, in the red corner, we have Gygas with a spectral armor. Boom! Bum, bum, bum. Okay, they both want to swap when HP's below half. There's no terrain advantages or anything, so I don't need my notes for once. Backing up the Gygas, we got Euoplocephalus. Two people have used the Euoplocephalus in this tournament, I think, and they're both in this group. Dun, dun. But there is a golden opportunity. Well, given how other results have gone, it is another is a golden opportunity for either of these two to finish this round top of group B. D. Sorry. Right. As for Team North America, in the blue corner we have Stratosaurus. Team from North America got off to a winning start last round. Well, both of them, both of these two dudes did. Bum, 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 bum. Backing up the Starachosaurus, we have the Utoraptor. So yeah, I feel like even if Zeno is at a point where he loses the Gygus, the Optocephalus comes in with a tight advantage over the Starachosaurus, so yeah. This is going to be a good match. I feel like it's going to be a good match. Zeno definitely did well in the last tournament, and aiming to do just as well this time. Well, in a tournament like this, it's very difficult to get to a semi-final again. But that's the challenge for Zeno, and can they do it? We'll have to see. They keep the bot. Okay, so both want to swap with when HP's in the below half, like I said earlier, which makes my life easy. Well, we see some spectral action. Well, if Geiger stays in long enough, yeah. Ooh, the Starachosaurus getting a hit, though. It's a lightning spear. One of these days we'll get an we'll get we'll fight in this alpha arena when there's an actual alpha dinosaur. Ooh, I think that's gonna be a swap in time for Gygus. I'm pretty sure that's below half. Only just though, but Gygus will attempt to swap. And get in the swap! This is a good start from Xeno Select Goku. And in fact, that swap will definitely help him because. This Gygus will have the tight advantage over the Utoraptor, should it come down to that match. And the Wapocephalus comes in with the tight advantage over Stratosaurus, so that's a very tactical swap there by Xeno. Of course, the Stratosaurus will be attempting to swap, and he will also get the swap. Coming in with a final fury as well, so this is going to do a decent amount of damage. Oh, and in fact... <laughs> I think you Euoplocephalus will be attempting a swap, but I think that's bang on half, so he can see it. Ooh, Cephalus getting a hit there. Boosh! Defense boost coming in. Ooh, that's a crit from the Euoplocephalus. Maxing up the defense boost, putting the pressure on Team North America. Okay, it's time to swap for the Eucharaptor. Ooh, a Drift Barrier coming in as well. Okay, now I definitely think Zeno's got the momentum. Oh, but the Eucharaptor will get the swap. And yes, Eucharaptor is below half. 
Well, he bang on half, but I accidentally clicked the swap. But don't worry, Zeno will get another attempt to swap. I double tap. That's fine, because the Geigers will heal it straight back up. Okay, so Team North America can no longer swap. Zeno still gets to swap out the Opercephalus, should he get the chance to. Ooh, it's a tie. And yep, yeah, there's the swap. You are the Cephalus getting the swap there, taking out the Soracosaurus. Which means it's going to be Gygus against Uteraster. And I don't think we're going to see the Spectral Armor, because, well, unless we get, like, Tallies, then we might see it. But if Geigers gets hits like that, we're probably not going to see the Spectral Armor. And yet, there it is. Game over. And in fact, that's a bonus point win for Zeno Slick Goku, which will put him top. Although, he's been unlucky with the Spectral Armor. He got the Spectral Armor there, but he'd won the match, so I don't think he'll care that much. But in the first match, he got the Spectral Armor, and then the Geigers died. <laughs> yeah. Right, let's have a look at how Group D stands. Well, Group D shaping up to be interesting. Yeah, the only group thus far where two of our combatants are yet to get off the mark after round two. So yes, we have Xeno Slick Goku at the top on seven points there, Man on six, Proxy on five, Team North America on four, and Lad and Silver Knights on zero points. So yeah, um, based on what I'm seeing, Round three, let's have a look who's playing in round three. So round three, we'll see Man going up against Broxy. Uh, Silver Knights going up against Zeno Slick Goku. That's, that's going to be tough for Silver Knight. That'll be tough. And then Team no Lad going up against Team North America. So, yeah. These two really need to get points in the third round. If if, not, if both of them lose in round three, then considering they got to play each other as well in round four, I think. I think round four will probably see the end, will mark the end for one of these two. But as for these four, looking good, looking good. Right, that's going to end this session here, so I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.